All right, on the line today we have Dr. Josh Axe. What an awesome guy. If you don't know who he is yet, I don't know where you are in this world, but you should know who he is. I uh, want you to learn a little bit more about him today. So, Dr. Axe, welcome. Hey, Dr. Josh. Thanks for having me. Super, We're super psyched to have you on the show. So what people may not know about you, I mean, they know your company. They know like you have this amazing bone broth and these nutritional supplements, and, and your health background is really cool. But I want them to know who you are as a person. Like, where where did you come from? I met you in chiropractic college, and now you've yeah. made this, you know, global. I shouldn't even say international. It's global sensation. Um, people are searching out worldwide for health. So let's let's hear a little bit of your story. Sure. Well, for for me, you know, anything I do, um, you know, I do it for you know for for, for really uh, for, for a purpose and, and for for uh, for a mission behind it. You know, for myself, growing up, I grew up in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, my mom was a gym teacher. My dad, uh, you know, worked on telephone lines. And but my dad weightlifted a lot. So growing up, like my family was really into health and fitness. And uh, you know, a- after some time, actually, I think I was about seventh grade. My mom came home and she said, "Hey, I've got some really bad news." And she said, "I've been diagnosed with cancer." And we were just shocked at the time because, again, my mom was – she was my gym teacher at school. She was a swim instructor. She was so active and fit and looked really healthy but yet had cancer. And so uh, we lived in what I call the medical model at the time. And, Dr. Joshua, I mean, you have so many patients that come in your clinic who that's where they – you know, that's where they start. And so when I was sick as a kid, I got put up on – put on antibiotics all the time. You know, my dad was, uh, you know, taking allergy medications. My mom was on medications. We just took medications. And so when my mom was sick, she went through the tr- traditional medical system. You know, she went and had a mastectomy. She went through rounds and rounds and rounds of chemotherapy. And I can just remember, uh, you know, seeing her her hair fall out. I remember looking at her and thinking, man, she's aged like 20 years in two weeks, and just being so just torn up inside, being a seventh uh, in seventh grade, and just thinking, there's nothing I can do to help her. You know, and so that went on. And finally, after through all the treatments, she went back to the oncologist and they said, hey, we've got good news now. You're cancer free and healthy. But really, for the next 10 years after going through chemo, she was really sicker than ever. My mom spent half of her life in bed, had no energy, no quality of life. She got put on an antidepressant medication, medications to treat her thyroid, her digestive system, all kinds of stuff. And so really, in one of my biggest memories of my mom growing up is she she taught she she was a school teacher she'd get home from work and she would have to take a nap every day i mean she was so physically and emotionally exhausted all the time uh that that she had to take a nap and so 10 years passed and after 10 years i was actually in chiropractic college there you know in palmer florida and uh you know studying studying chiropractic studying nutrition natural medicine and my mom gives me a call again and, and she's in tears on the phone and she says I've got bad news. Uh, they think that my cancer is spread. They found tumors on my lungs. And she said, they want to go in and do radiation in three days and do surgery. And she said, what do I do? And I said, I'll be home. I flew home. We sat down, prayed together, and we just really felt led to take care of her all naturally. And my mom, after going through chemo, that's a whole other thing. You know, one of the side effects she had from chemo was she was having an average of one bowel movement a week and that'd be going on for years and you can imagine how sick you would be if that were you so with my mom we said you know what uh we're gonna go all naturally we're gonna go at this for about four four to six months and then we'll go back and visit the oncologist and so with my mom we just decided we're gonna do everything right my mom started juicing vegetables every single day she started actually seeing a a chiropractor she get adjusted and then she got this type of massage lymphatic drainage yeah um she uh you know she um we were doing certain supplements, lots of probiotics, uh, lots of turmeric, lots of reishi mushroom, um, antioxidants. And, and, and then she just really reduced stress. My mom used to ride horses growing up. So she started riding horses again and just doing things to just really reduce stress. Uh, and so we followed, she followed this natural health protocol for about four months. We went back to the oncologist and he did a CT scan and he called us about a day, day later, a day or two later. And he said, this is highly unusual. He said, I've never seen this before, but the tumors have shrunk by more than half. He said, what are you doing? We just told him and he just goes, hmm, okay. 
well, I'll see you again in nine months. And so we went back nine months later, continued to follow this health protocol. And at that point, she was almost in complete remission. And today, it's been over 10 years since then. And now my mom is in complete remission. She's in the best shape of her life. In fact, she's you know ran several 5Ks with me in the past few years, finished second, third in her age group. She's you know re- retired down, uh, re- retired. She lived in Ohio. Her and my dad retired down into Florida. And now they water ski you know several times a week, live on a lake down there. And just do absolutely amazing. That's if I so joke, good. Yeah, you know, I joke around with my mom now. Like she has a, uh, she uses her Vitamix all the time, and I joke around that she's, I call her the Vitamix lady because she, she actually brings other uh, patients with cancer or breast cancer over to her house, teaches them how to make green smoothies and juice vegetables, and so you know, she really now. Um, you know, teaches others. She took, you know, this, this information that saved her life and uses it for others. And so really, you know, seeing that whole thing of my mom being so sick and seeing her transformation, that's really a big part of what caused me to become, you know, a doctor of natural medicine and a chiropractor and really want to help people uh, heal naturally. So that's really sort of the mission behind everything I do from the products and the online health website with content and, uh, and everything else. I mean, that, that story is, I mean, that's very personal, but that's, I thank you so much for sharing that because that's, I can see why you have a fire lit under your rear end to keep you moving forward. That's, I mean, that's a really cool thing. So let's kind of dive into a little bit of your content. You know, when we spoke pre-call, actually with email, um, we spoke about like you helping people with autoimmune conditions, hormone conditions, um, digestion. Uh, and things like this. Can, you want to dive into a little bit of those just to kind of give sure. people an idea of where you are and what you do? Yeah. So, so for me, you know, the way I practice now, I practice a lot of uh, what would be considered Chinese medicine. Um, you know, I've studied Chinese medicine, studied, studied Ayurvedic medicine, Greek medicine, and, and what, more of what we do in Western medicine today. And, and for me, you know, when I'm t- treating a patient, I really look at them holistically. And I really look at sort of their that, that sort of spirit mind component along with sort of that physical component. And also, I really want to dig down to what is the root cause of the disease. And a lot of doctors are starting to say that more, which I applaud and think is great. But I think that we really want to dig as deep as possible. And I'll give you an example of this. With, with a you know, with a hormone issue like hypothyroidism, there's a prime example. Most hypothyroidism today is actually an autoimmune form called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And so most of the time when patients are going to their doctor today, they're getting put on a medication like Synthroid. Maybe they're trying something a little more natural like Armour Thyroid, or they're getting put on an immunosuppressant. So that's the way we treat most things today. If we're really looking at what's the root cause of Hashimoto's thyroiditis or hypothyroidism, you know, the root cause there tends to start in the gut, okay? And so it starts with a condition called leaky gut. You know, your your intestines act like a net and you have little holes in them. Well, these holes can get bigger and open up and allow certain things to get into your bloodstream that shouldn't get there, like uh, undigested gluten and other proteins, bad bacteria, toxins, those can get into your bloodstream. They recirculate and they can actually target different areas of your body. And then your body can start attacking itself. So your thyroid, for instance, contains certain types of proteins. Over time with that type of autoimmune condition, what it can do, your body can start autoimmune. It's actually attacking its own tissues. So the thyroid, so Treating it with a medication is not the solution. The solution is sealing and healing up the gut lining. In addition to that, giving the thyroid nutrients that it needs to support deficiency, and even certain cases, really going and rejuvenating your parasympathetic nerve system and your adrenal glands to reduce stress on the body. And so just to give an example of what that might look like, in order to heal and seal that leaky gut, what you'd want to do is start removing certain foods that cause intestinal inflammation. We're talking sugar is the number one culprit, processed sugar, gluten, hydrogenated oils, processed foods. All of these things together really contribute to leaky gut. And we want to replace those with certain foods. You know, bone broth contains certain types of amino acids like proline, which make up collagen, which help heal and seal that gut lining. Omega-3 fats and salmon are fantastic for reducing that gut inflammation. You know, certain vegetables, certain types of berries like blueberries really can help protect the gut lining. So, so, you know, you want to eat a diet that's really high in bone broth 
in cooked organic wild meats and cooked vegetables, even things like blueberries and pears are some of the most easy fruits to digest. So that's what that diet should look like. So we want to repair the gut lining. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to really support the thyroid. So certain nutrients like selenium is very good for the thyroid. Iodine. There's amino acids like tyrosine. So, you know, you can supplement or do certain foods to really support the thyroid. And then doing herbal extracts that support the thyroid like ashwagandha or great. And then in terms of the adrenals and parasympathetic nerve system, you know, actually chiropractic adjustments of the upper cervical spine and of the sacrum, uh, working in that area, whether you're seeing a chiropractor or a practitioner that does craniosacral therapy, but really decreasing that tension in those areas can actually support the body's parasympathetic response, as can doing lots of other things. I'll give you an example. Most of us are on computer screens and iPhones and watching TV all day. We're in traffic jams. All of those things keep us in a sympathetic state. Going for a walk in nature, reading a book for fun or just any type of book, you know, th those types of things rejuvenate our parasympathetic nerve system and help really help rejuvenate the adrenal glands in, in addition. So, you know, when I have a patient that I, and, and you know, I, I practiced for, you know, for years and then several years ago, I got so busy online and with my vitamin supplement company focused and shifted there. I still see, you know, one or two patients a week though, just through consulting and things like that on occasion. But when I see patients today, I really say, you know what, we need to treat the root cause of the disease. We're not just going to look at the thyroid. We're going to look at the gut. We're going to look at your entire nervous system. You know, we're going to get to the root cause of the disease here. So someone can and fully heal. And something I told my patients, Dr. Josh, I know, I know you feel the same way. For me, like, I love my parents more than anything. I love my mom more than anything. And I tell, you know, when I was in my clinic, I used to tell, especially my female patients, I'm going to take care of you like I would my own mom. You know, when my mom was sick, she was like a deer in the headlights. The biggest thing I could tell you about her, she was overwhelmed. There's so much information out there. There's so many conflicting evidences. That, do I go vegan? Do I go paleo? You know, what do I what do I do here that I found that people really want their hand held as I would and they want to they want to know every last step of what's every, what do I eat for every meal? What do I you know, what do I do lifestyle wise? What do I do to really completely heal? So really in terms of being a practitioner, that's how I practice. And, um, you know, and that's how I think people get the best results. That's great. You know, you're using some words that I'm, some people may not know, but I just want to clear up with some people. Yeah. Par parasympathetic and sympathetic. When, when, when he's talking, when Dr. Axe is talking about that, that sympathetic nervous system is like your fight or flight, your stress response, which is going to turn down your healing response, which would be the, the parasympathetic response. So the way he works with people is actually helping people boost that parasympathetic healing response and decrease their stress response so the body actually can heal itself. Like he said, the medications are not the things that are doing the healing. They may be hiding symptoms or playing chemistry set with the body. Totally. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to, and to mention this as well, in, in regards to that uh, parasympathetic response, you know, it's, you know, I, I kind of use this example too, you know, like uh, you and I both, you know, love working out and love, you know, love playing sports and that type of thing. But, you know, if you're ever out running, or in the middle of a workout, like you can't down a cheeseburger, you know, you can't, you, you can do like gate, you know, some sort of sports drink and that type of thing. And the reason is, is when you are in a, in a sympathetic state and you are, when you're working out really hard for a bit now, actually later on, it actually can have an opposite effect, which is good. But when you're doing that really hard workout, you're in that fight or you're, you're flying, sprinting, or you're fighting all of your body's energy goes to your extremities, your arms, your legs, up to uh, up to uh, a certain area of your brain but it leaves your digestive tract it leaves you know it leaves certain areas versus you know and this is why people that live under high levels of stress they can get di think about it, if you've ever got really emotionally stressed people get upset stomachs right it actually affects their digestive tract when they're in that sympathetic state so it's it, it's a big deal you know almost 99% of people probably closer to 100 are living in this high sympathetic state yeah, I see it, and especially practicing in New York City myself. It's it's oh. so prominent, and that's you know when we get people come to the office, it's you know trying to if I say the word relax to someone, they almost get like a chuckle, right? It's like <laughs> I don't yeah. know how to do that. Yeah, and that's a big part, you know, that that's missing in healing, and that's why our office is kind of like a living room um, because we want people to have that response. So um, besides besides you know that that great example with the the thyroid. 
um, what would be some really interesting action steps or some things that people could actually do maybe on a daily basis, something that you know they have at their fingertips every day that they can be proactive with to activate you know, their parasympathetic, their de-stress system? Sure. Well, you know, anytime uh, for, from a dietary standpoint, here, here's something that uh, – this is a principle that is so ingrained in you and I, but I, a lot of people haven't grasped this yet. But the body heals itself. In terms of diet-wise, just to let you know, uh, now, Dr. Josh, you know this, but just to our viewers know, there is not a food that heals you. Broccoli doesn't heal you. Bone broth doesn't heal you. Coconut oil doesn't heal you. Your body heals itself. And in order, and this is why people practiced fasting for so long. When your body fasts, um, it allows your body to finally say, I can heal myself. So think about this. If you got a cut on your hand and you keep kind of rubbing it, it just never heals. Well, imagine in your digestive system, you've got, you've got cuts, you've got, you've got essentially ul- certain types of ulcers, these, these things to where your body, your, these areas of injury and in your gut and digestive tract, we got to let those areas fully heal. In order to let your body fully heal, you need to do one of two things. You either need to fast or you need to consume foods that are easy to digest, foods that are just – your body has to do almost no work with. Now, this might surprise some people, but doing a lot of raw vegetables, like especially raw cruciferous vegetables, those are actually hard to digest. The things that are the easiest to digest are things that are pre-digested or broken down in their simplest forms. This is why bone broth is one of the most healing foods in the world. It's in its amino acid form. It's really – it's hard to even call it a full protein. It's amino acids. So when you're drinking bone broth, your body's like, hey, I can utilize these nutrients and I have to do pretty much no work. Similar thing, coconut oil is such a great fat because your body only has to go through a three-step process to break it down versus other oils about a 19-step process. So your body's like, man, hey, thank you. This is easy. Cooked vegetables. By cooking them, they're already in easy form to digest. Uh, or they become even easier to digest. So that's why that's a perfect food. And then certain fruits are really high in enzymes, which make them easy to digest. That's why I mentioned pears earlier. Pineapple is another example. Blueberries are really high in certain types of nutrients that make them easy. So the best diet for a parasympathetic nerve system is a diet that is the easiest on your body to digest and process. And that's going to include bone broth, wild caught fish like salmon, um, cooked vegetables. And the other thing would be probiotic foods because probiotic foods through fermentation, probiotics or certain acids break down the food for you. And this is why even things like sourdough, I mean, people practice and use lacto-fermentation and probiotics for years. And the reason it's good for the gut, one, it brings you probiotics, but also it's pre-digested things for you. And when you consume something like sauerkraut or one of those foods, when you have probiotics and enzymes that are in those foods, when you eat something else, it's helping you digest. So that's really the principle. If you want to increase parasympathetic nerve system, you want to consume foods that make it easy on your body to heal itself and to actually digest some of the foods for you. Okay, so that's great. I actually, I actually took, took some notes on there. Yeah, I, I was thinking of like the kombucha I'm drinking and the sauerkrauts and those types of go. things. Um, but you mentioned fasting for healing. If someone decides, you know, tomorrow I want to, I'd like to do a fast. What is yep. a fast really? What goes in your body? What doesn't go in your body? And how long should you actually do it for? You know, fasting is tough for a lot of people. I mean, we are so used to having food. So when you do a fast, I don't necessarily think you need to do a water fast where you only drink water. I think you can do like I've had my patients do a bone broth fast where all they're doing is they for, for three days, they can consume two things, chicken broth or bone bone broth. And then cooked vegetables. Okay, so cooked carrots, cooked celery, cooked spinach. You know, so they're doing cooked vegetables and just bone broth, doing that for three days. And I'm telling you, I mean, the great thing is, is people are also during that time getting nutrients they need, or even doing vegetable juice and herbal tea with that. I mean, by doing that, you're getting lots of pro these amino acids and collagen that we lack in our diet. With a veggie juice, you're getting loads and loads of vitamins and nutrients. So again, just like bone broth and veggie juice. Uh, it, it really is a great fast. So I have my patients start off with a three-day fast like that, and then after three days, move into doing this diet I'm talking about that's more 
like a GAPS diet or a collagenic, like something that's really high in vegetables, fruits, and wild meats. Okay. Okay. So the, the fast that someone might want to do is, you know, just uh, that bone broth would be essential because it's giving them the collagen, it's giving those the amino acids, it's giving those healing properties that allows their body to actually put stuff together. Is that what you you're saying? It. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And again, that con- that con- I'm just that combination of drinking bone broth all day with veggie juice all day, the results are really I'm just telling they're, they're they're amazing, so yeah. great. So yep. in your experience, you know, I know you've had help with your mother, with your obviously with you know your thousands of patients that you've had over the years. How about yourself? What kind of changes or things have you noticed? You know, you're 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 I would call you a healthy guy, you know, that's yep. what I would call you, um, and you're athletic. So what what kind of benefits or perks as someone with an active healthy lifestyle how would they benefit from doing eating a specific way like you're eating and that you're talking about well you know think about this athletes today and and we're going to see this a lot in the future you know in the past i mean really it was just about you know 20 plus years ago that uh all of this knowledge about the importance of omega-3 and omega-6 balance of those types of fat. I mean, everybody today's heard of omega-3 fats and all the benefits in wild salmon and flax seeds and those types of things. So, but we're not talking about balancing out types of protein. So we've talked about fats. We haven't talked about protein. So most of the meat, most of the foods we consume today, they're called methionine rich proteins, chicken breast, grass fed beef, and, and actually here's a surprising thing. The proteins that are found in meat today are very similar to the proteins that are found in in grains and vegetables. So brown rice, oatmeal, quinoa, beans, they are all full of a lot of methionine-rich proteins. That's where bone broth comes in. Bone broth is high in proline, glycine, hydroxyproline, which are uh, which are collagenic rich proteins, which are what we need to support our ligaments, tendons, and connective tissue and our fascia. Okay, so most of us today think about this. We're sort of fueling our our muscles by eating muscles and by eating grains. It, it's fuel, and and that's why a, how many athletes today tear muscles compared to tearing ligaments? It's probably a ten to one ratio. The amount of athletes that tear ligaments compared to there's so many ACL tears and you know gleno you know rotator cuff and meniscus tears. and all this and, stuff, right? It, exactly, all the time. Well, part of the reason is is most of these people have no support for their ligaments and tendons. They're not getting those collagen rich proteins. We have a lot of pro athletes. In fact, Heath Evans played for the Patriots. He uh, is a good friend of Jordan Rubin and myself. So he's, I mean, he loves bone broth protein. We talk to him all the time. We've got a lot of CrossFit athletes, but a lot of NFL players, especially now that are using a bone, bone broth on a regular basis, especially because it's, um, because they need those collagen rich proteins. You know, I had my sister, another example, she doesn't necessarily have any health problems, but um, she's always had, her hair's been a little thinner than she's wanted it to be. And immediately when she started doing collagen and bone broth powder in a protein form, she called me after two weeks. She says, I've tried everything over the years, like biotin and certain oils and all this Mm -hmm. different stuff. She said, I've noticed a bigger difference in two weeks in doing bone broth than ever before. Because, you know, your body is made up of certain types of collagen. For instance, your gut lining is made up of type 2 collagen, as are your ligaments uh, and your meniscus and your tendons, versus your bones and your discs and your skin, hair, and nails are made up of type 1 and 3 collagen. You're only getting that collagen when you drink bone broth. And our ancestors, hey, they made broth, and they also they ate the ligaments. You know, They would take them off, and yeah. they would chew them. My grandmother does that. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny. Jordan Rubin's uh, grandmother grew up. He they're they're from Brooklyn. Yep. So is my uh, grandmother, New York. <laughs> and he tells a story about how she would chew all the ligaments off all the tendons anytime they ate any food. So it's just funny. So so it must be a you know a a, 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 New, a New York thing. I mean, his, yeah. his mom is awesome. She they, they're you know uh, she has the strongest Jewish you know Brooklyn accent I've, I've ever heard. It's awesome. So uh, but anyway, so we got to get more of these in our diet. For everybody, whether you want to have healthier skin, hair, and nails, healthier digestive system, joints. I mean, it's amazing for joints. So, you know, I, th- I think it's a – of all the things people are missing today, it's definitely one of the biggest. Yeah, I, and I want to give you like a shameless plug for the, the collagen protein the, or the bone, bro- bone broth protein. You know, I started taking it I think it's probably February or March last year. 
and I take it daily. And you know, I had a ruptured meniscus about two two plus years ago, and I was told, "Oh, you may not be lifting weights again." I was lifting weights again, and uh, since starting it, my knee's been giving me less and less kind of issues, if you will. Yeah. And I just ran a marathon in May. You know, all the wow, stuff that I was told awesome. not to be able to do, um, I'm doing, and and just just you talking about the connective tissue, I didn't even put two plus two together in my head. I just remember listening to you talk. I'm like, oh, crap, I got to buy this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, y- you know, the, the awesome. only other tissue I'll say, too, that does have some collagen in it is organ meats, which is another thing we don't eat like liver, you know. Yeah. So so just those things that all of our ancestors ate, we just, you know, we're, we're, we're not getting. All right. That's very neat. It's, I actually spoke to the, the doctors, Wolfson. We had a long conversation about organ meat. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and all these love, weird uh, things. Yeah, yeah, the Wolfsons are awesome. They're great yeah. people. That's great. Um, so this is great. So let's let's wind down a little bit here, and let's you know, yeah. I, I mean, one of the action steps I would tell everybody is you know get your get your bone broth protein. I'm a fan of the chocolate's my favorite one. Uh, I've tried quite a few of them. Um, but what? Let's give like just three simple tomorrow action steps. You know, do this, do this, do this type of thing yeah and and people may have heard this before but I'll, I'll just say i think this is such a big thing you know if we're talking about the three baby steps here to really transform your health in a major way number one change your breakfast if you just change your breakfast to a superfood smoothie with bone broth powder in it every day you've already changed probably a third of your diet that is a massive change so again just want to encourage you if today if you're you know eating you know the bagels and cereal for breakfast every single day or you know, whatever that is, man, just make that switch. Start doing that superfood smoothie with with a with a bone broth powder and collagen every single day. I think that's a really big step people can make. You know, th- the second thing I would say, um, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of essential oils. I think there's a lot of benefits there. I, you know, doing things like lavender oil, peppermint oil, because we live in this parasympathetic state, you know, using lavender oil is so calming to the body. You know, one of the things, uh, Dr. Josh, I had my patients do, especially ones I knew we really needed to get those cortisol levels down yeah. and really support the adrenals and thyroid. I started to have them do a healing bath at night where they took one cup of Epsom salts. Now, Epsom salts are really high in magnesium, known as the relaxation mineral. And then I had them do about 20 drops of lavender oil, which is known as the relaxation oil. And I'd have them just soak in the tub for 20 minutes, you know, after dinner, before they went to bed, like three days a week. And I'm just telling you, the results with that and how much better they slept at night and recovered was really good. So again, hey, just get, just get lavender oil, some Epsom salt, start doing a bath. So again, my number one thing to have in your locker, I'd say some bone broth protein. I would say some uh, lavender oil is uh, is fantastic. And man, the last thing, I mean, those two things alone are great. I'm trying to think of a third one. Yeah. I mean, I'm a huge fan of coconut oil. People probably talk about that all the time, but I use it for cooking. I use it in smoothies. I use it in personal care products. In fact, I make my own homemade toothpaste with peppermint oil, baking soda, and coconut oil. And I just, you know, that's what I use. So, you know, those would be three of the things I I think that, you know, those are three things that I have all over my house, you know, here right now. So just with coconut oil, are all coconut oils equal yeah you when you buy, when you buy coconut oil definitely get unrefined you know i get extra virgin uh organic unrefined coconut oil okay. you know when you open it up you, you should smell like you're on a beach in tahiti in the caribbean you know it just <laughs> should smell like you know there are these coconut oils today where they refine them so they have no coconut scent and, and you're actually taking out some of those beneficial compounds you're they, they're extracting those so so you really want to unrefine extra virgin okay good good yep. i you know it's i we've been using it now for years and i love the media how it's going oh it's horrible it's good oh, it's, oh the oh american heart God. association <laughs> yeah that was just so ridiculous it's funny yeah so awesome dr x this is this is a phenomenal interview i'm glad you're able to share your your life story there up front you know very personal but very appreciative i think that people are going to really look at you a little differently and uh hopefully it will help change their lives as well. So what I'm going to do, we're going to put this all in the show notes. We're going to have people connect with you all over the place. And um, obviously, it's DrAxe.com is is the biggie if they haven't figured that part out yet, right? Um, Yeah, yep. 
Yeah, you know, I just want to mention a resource on DrAx.com, too. If you're watching this, uh, listening to this interview or watching it, we um, – I have a whole health index now on the site. So if you go to, it's just D-R-A-X-E.com. We have a con- we have a tab now. It's called A to Z conditions, and if you just click on that conditions tab, we have over a hundred conditions from candida to hypothyroidism to you know. Uh, IBS, any condition you probably have or can think of. And if you you can click on the condition you have, and we have listed on there the top five supplements, the top five foods. Really, you know, we really have it set up to where making it easy for you so you know, hey, what's the best things for you to sort of take in order to get well? So anyways, you can check out that resource there on on, on the website too. It's, it's really good. I was actually just looking at it about an hour ago. <laughs> All, that All stuff right, great. Pretty cool. cool. So great, Dr. X. I want to thank you so much. I think the listeners are going to thank you. Uh, we'll follow you on Facebook and so on and so forth, and hopefully we'll use your products because you are you are walking proof that your stuff is awesome. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for having me, uh, Dr. Josh. I know I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll see you at a seminar soon. And uh, hey, thanks, everybody, for watching.